Winter arrived early this year with temperatures falling fast and this meant that longer distance driving was best served chilled. I'm now driving across town. I've got a big journey to make, 90 kilometers there and back. Uh, but unfortunately, I can't use the heater if I want to make that sort of journey. My electric car can make such a journey easily, providing I don't use the heater, because turning on the heater absolutely decimates the car's range. So you can imagine my joy when this big box arrived with my ultimate heating solution. It's a diesel parking heater that I bought on the internet which burns fuel to heat up the car. Now many owners have already installed parking heaters before, like this one, which taps into the car's existing water heating loop, but this idea was way out of my price range. Mine on the other hand is different, it burns fuel too, but instead of burning water, it heats the air that's fanned over a large heatsink at the back but will it actually fit inside the car? To find out, I got busy fabricating a cardboard mock-up and started to take the car apart in search of the ideal installation location, keeping in mind I'd need to vent the dangerously hot gases outside and have a fuel source nearby. And after crawling all over the car, I found the ideal spot, but before I could install it, I needed to test it out. Annoyingly, none of the three biodiesel manufacturers I asked would sell me any of their product, so I had to go to the gas station for the first time in 16 months. But fortunately, my wife bought me some diesel as a gift, and they say romance is dead. The parking heater is really pretty simple. Everything just plugs together with no special wiring needed. It comes with its own little controller and an adorable fuel pump too. The only wiring required is to connect the positive and negative wires to the car's battery. Oh, and figure out a fuel source too, of course. So I put a little diesel in a jar, hooked up the fuel lines, aimed the exhaust outside, and pressed the power button. Oh, Jesus, that scared me. After about 20 seconds of gentle whirring, my amazing new heater gave me an error message. That's not a good start. I figured it was due to a lack of fuel, so I forced it into fuel pump mode for a full minute, then tried again. Oh, 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 something's happening. I'm guessing I must have primed it a little too rich because before I knew it, the heater was trying to remove malaria from the garage. Oh God. After about a minute, it started to burn clean. So I put on the cover and did some heat comparisons between my new diesel heater and our regular electric heater. It's been running for 15 minutes now, but 28.8 degrees is as hot as I can get it from this household heater with the temperature gauge 30 centimeters away exactly. Now let's try it with the diesel heater. The diesel heater, on the other hand, produced a lot more heat, pumping out 40 degrees despite the freezing air outside. So with testing complete and with my little jar of fuel starting to run out, I shut it down and prepared for the next big step, installing the heater inside the car. Now hiding the heater was always going to be a problem. Putting it inside the glove box would have been great from an aesthetic point of view, but physical and safety limitations put a stop to that idea. But I found a much better place, and got busy creating a support frame. Now this model of heater is not designed to be mounted outside the car. In fact I know of one person that tried this and killed their heater. So I needed a place inside the car that was away from rain and moisture with easy access, that wouldn't inconvenience passengers, and somewhere where I could easily remove the heater's hot exhaust gases. So I went with the obvious option, I put it in the boot. This is a safe, logical, manageable solution for the heater install, although this could have its own problem. Plenty of spaces for the exhaust to go, but of course there's a good couple of meters between the heater and the windscreen. Actually I'm quite happy with this design because it means that uh, if for whatever reason someone needs access to the engine or motor compartment, by putting that seat forward you can still get access to it easily. Not that you would, because it's an electric car and there's nothing to fix. I got busy drilling out a big hole for the exhaust pipe and mounted it in the car. But the very hot exhaust pipe needed to be routed well away from any plastic or rubber parts. I'm now trying to figure out a good place for the exhaust pipe. At the moment I just have it aimed out the back, which is functional, but I don't want my electric car to have a visible tailpipe, so I now have to figure out a way to secure it without it touching any plastic bits. I hid the exhaust pipe behind the rear bumper away from plastics and started to rig up the diesel fuel tank and fuel lines. I wanted the heater and the fuel tank to be reasonably close to each other for easy removal as one unit for when springtime arrives. And with the system nice and watertight, or should I say diesel tight, I started wiring up the electrical part of the system, connecting it to a permanent 12 volt supply, while also looking for a tidy and accessible place to mount the controller. After that I filled up the heater's tiny 1.5 litre diesel tank and prepared myself for the moment of truth. Okay, it's taken me four hours to put this thing together. 
I've still got to put the carpet in yet, I'll do that tomorrow. In the meantime, let's see if this thing actually works. After many hours of effort, I backed the car onto the driveway for safety in case something goes wrong during testing, and I fired up the system for the very first time inside the car. After some initial smoke, then steam, it ran clean, and I ended up running the system for a good 30 minutes to check for any overheating. I was pretty satisfied with the results, so I shut it down for the night. Mission accomplished. It's the next morning. This gives you a better view of the heater installation in the back of the car for the winter. And as you can see, in the passenger compartment, I have my carbon monoxide detector and the control panel for the heater down here. After inspecting the fuel and exhaust system again, I tested the system once more in the light of day, curious at the noise it made from outside the car. From outside the car, you can hear it, but it's not very loud. It's a bit like a loud fan going, or, or one of those horrible noise generators new electric cars have to have. Okay, it's been running for about 12 minutes now, on just below full power. And you can see already the car is up to 23 degrees Celsius, which is, I'll be honest, much better than I thought it would be. Now the temperature is still climbing even though it's been, it's running down on quiet mode now, so it's, it's much quieter now. I bet it's still climbing, it's still 28.2 degrees Celsius. Uh, okay, so this heater is much more powerful than I thought it would be. I put the carpet back into the car, paying careful attention to the exhaust, and got ready to put the heater through some serious below freezing real world testing, driving to work and back. One thing I'm a little bit concerned about is how bumpy the roads are going to be making the machine jiggle. So I'm going to use this as a test with the camera in the back to see how much it moves and if I need to add extra support. But my regular post-journey inspection showed there was nothing to worry about. Everything's clean and dry. Underneath, all the fittings are dry. Carpet is cold. I've been checking the fuel system after every journey as well as the bolts and the exhaust, but so far there are no issues to report, the system is secure and safe, and it's making my daily commute something to look forward to. Let's crank it up to 90%. That'll keep me nice and toasty as we make the journey home, without using any of the main battery pack's electricity. It's only been going for five minutes and I'm already warming up. You know, I might not have wasted all my money, that's a good feeling. <laughs> So far I'm continuing to test the heater thoroughly. It works well, but I do need to find a way to circulate the hot air around the car to better prevent the windscreen from fogging. Either with some ducting like this, or perhaps with a simple fan from the hardware store. Also, if it's possible, I wouldn't mind making this little heater remote controlled for when winter comes. So stay tuned for the next video. Oh, that's disgusting. Ugh. Filthy. Ah, oh, that's disgusting. Awful. Disgusting. Oh, that's horrible. Someone actually thought this was worth fighting a war over this crap.